peaceful sense, uh, we're still seeing ideas from computing infiltrating into statistics and vice versa. And my feeling is that John, although he never was directly involved in programming himself, was very interested in computing. He made many contributions uh, at the conceptual level. Um, and I have a feeling that, in, as in so many other areas, he saw a long way ahead, way back 50 years ago. So later on, I had a number of interactions with John at, at Bell Labs. They were usually very informal. They were usually along the lines of, uh, you know, I'm, John would come and say, oh, I'm doing so-and-so. So uh, you're welcome to come and, and interact and comment on it. Uh, and I must admit, I, those, I, those invitations, I, I, I found a sort of mixed reaction to them because I, I was very honored in a sense, but I was also uh, a little in trepidation of trying to compete with John. And in particular, uh, although I, I'm not sure that I was aware of, of Box's famous uh, aphorism at that point, my own point of view has always been uh, very much in line with, with George's comment that all models are wrong, but some models are useful. Now, John would certainly have agreed with the first half of that, uh, but especially in, in his writings, he tended to not like to use models. And I, at that point, I was very much into numerical analysis, so I was busy developing software for all kinds of linear and nonlinear models and stuff like that. So I was put into the position, actually, of defending uh, more or less conventional statistics uh, against what seemed to be John's dismissal of it. Well, uh, this is sort of an unusual position for me because I was usually on the other side of the fence. Uh, and it, it, tended to be, <laughs> it tended to be an interesting experience to try to, to try to keep up with John and try to answer something that he had said that you felt wasn't quite right. But of course, by the time you figured out what was not quite right about it, he'd gone on to three or four other things that were equally wild. It was a wonderful experience. And uh, the, in the particular instance that I, I thought of when I was uh, reminiscing on this stuff, John Tukey and Peter Claringold, who was an Australian statistician, did a lot of work on what loosely might be called analysis of variance style computations. But uh, of course, John never used that term. Uh, and uh, he invited me to sit in on, the, on their, their thinking and their planning on a number of occasions. I realized afterwards uh, that, in fact, I was being honored there because it meant that John wanted to hear what I thought about what he was doing. And when I think back on it, I, I realized that was a, a very great compliment and I, I very much appreciate it in retrospect. So he was a wonderful guy, uh, amazing guy, frustrating guy. And I don't expect to look on his like again. Thank you. <laughs> happy happy to, to, to answer any questions or anybody wants to know more. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not sure people could hear the question. Did I notice any difference in the way he communicated, depending on whether he was in a, at Bell Labs in the corporate situation or, uh, or at, at Princeton? Um, I didn't hear him too often at Princeton. So uh, I, I'm told that he was a very good teacher, that, that the, the students enjoyed him. Uh, what I did notice very much was a difference between the way he communicated to his professional colleagues in statistics versus how he communicated to people in other areas and other disciplines, whether they were engineers, secretaries, programmers. When he was communicating with the rest of the world, he could be extraordinarily clear. He could just put things in a wonderful, straightforward way. I think that when he talked to his professional colleagues, a little bit of mischief came into it. And he took, he took delight in inventing terms, in inventing new words, and saying things in a way that he knew would, would rankle the audience. And believe me, it did. <laughs> I think especially for some reason the, the British statisticians resented all of his inventing new words. Anybody else? I can't see too well. Yeah, at the back. Oh, yeah. Why don't you ask the question in, again? In, I, is this working? Okay. 
in what ways was he dismissive of statistical models and, and what did he advocate for in as an alternative? Yeah, yeah, it's a good question. Thanks. Um, the style of, of John's data analysis, if you look at the, um, for example, the, the book he wrote called EDA, Experiment, Exploratory Data Analysis, his style was very much what uh, nowadays you would, you take some calculation, you compute some uh, derived value, it might be a summary, it might be a, an expression of uh, the, the differences between the data and a summary, and he would display those, you know, it, it sounds very much like what we do today, but uh, John would present the, the summary, let's say, and the summary was a word he liked to use, as a computational technique. He'd say you take the data, you do this, this, and this to it, and that's your thing. So for example, uh, in probability plotting, there are people use the quantiles, particularly the quartiles, uh, for box plots, for instance, and for other kinds of, of applications like that. Sometimes modified slightly, but you define them by the distribution. John didn't, never talked about quartiles or quantiles. He talked about hinges. And the hinge, I'm not sure I can remember the definition, but the definition of the hinge was what you did to compute it. It wasn't some sort of mathematical thing. So in that sense, mathematical models never really entered into the way he presented a lot of this stuff. Now, that was a trick, because John's PhD was in mathematics, it was in topology. And, and he knew the mathematics, but he chose often to put it aside and just describe, here's what you do. Take the data, do this, look at that. Okay. Yeah. You just can wait for the mic, just real quick. How to interpret this uh, box plot is. Something I have no idea. I didn't do this, <laughs> but I will tell you what I do know, which is um, so box plot summarize data by by saying if I. If you had all the, all the points in a set of data going along here, these little whiskers are chosen to, to be an estimate of how, how much you would expect the data to, to spread if it was behaving itself reasonably, right? And uh, usually, I'm not sure whether this, I, I didn't produce this plot, so if I'm wrong, I take no responsibility whatsoever. Uh, but normally these are what John would call the hinges, which are roughly the, quartile, the, the, the quartiles. And if there was real data here, you might see some points sticking out beyond here. And those are points that people might want to look at because they're potentially say, saying something that's different from the rest of the data. No, I think that you have different sets of data here, presumably. Whatever it is. <laughs> okay. 